Do you want to taste the citric acid? It's pretty sour. Yeah. Oh, don't do all oh, that. Oh my God. You better drink some water. <laughs> I don't know, Cosmo. <gasps> that could be worse. Oh, okay. You gotta take your time. Ooh. <laughs> 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 all right. That was an experience. Hey everyone, I'm Claire. I'm in the BA Test Kitchen and today I'm making gourmet Sour Patch Kids. This is not my best category of candy, but I like sour. I'd say that. They still look like children. That makes these more disturbing than I remembered. Mm. Better than I remember. Mmm. They're good. They they just crossed over to being not good. So like, the first one was pretty good, the second one's pretty good. The third one would probably still be okay, and then the fourth one would be like, bad. I love the like mouth salivating sour coating. It has a very chewy texture. The coating, I'm 99.9% .9 sure, is a mixture of sugar and citric acid, and that's it. So there's no flavor in the coating, the flavor is the gummy part itself. Big ones? Oh, they're hugging. Same thing, just different size. Fire? I don't love sweet, sour, and spicy. These are really weird. I don't hate it, but I don't like it. Wow, this is a big bag. I don't know what these are. These are watermelon Sour Patch Kids, but they're not in the shape of kids. They're in the shape of watermelons. They're good. I wish they were more sour. They're not really sour. Extreme sour, I'm super excited about this. I love sour. Mm. Mm. Oh wait, okay. Now it's happening. Ooh, it's good. Mm. I don't know what red is. Mm. You don't like that. I love that. No, no, oh, you are not gonna like the final one then. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have the only flavor that matters. Oh, what? Which is Sour what? Patch watermelon. Oh. Greatest candy. Are you time. kidding, Delaney? <laughs> Oh my god, these are the best ones. The watermelon everyone, ones. Everyone loves those. The regular ones, you eat a whole bag, cut your tongue. Oh yeah, like sandpaper. Like sandpaper. Yeah. You just keep going though. It's like a chemical exfoliator. Yeah. When's the last time you had one? Not that long ago, actually. Really? So my younger child, Cosmo, is actually coming to work tomorrow because it's summer and camps are done. <laughs> and he is a sour aficionado. He fancies himself like a real sour, like he'll eat a whole lime. Oh, wow. The most important thing about it is the texture. It's the I know. perfect chewy texture. I know. Perfect. It's very hard to say that right now. Yeah. Can we just talk about the shape real quick? Yeah. I don't like that they're in the shape of, first, I mean, they're supposed to be in the shape of children. <laughs> yeah. That's Why? Funny. Why are they called Sour Patch Kids? There has to be some character to it. What? What do you want it in the shape of? Watermelons? That's your job. Fine. All right, we're going to clear this off, and I'm going to take a closer look. How I used to carry things when I worked in a restaurant, I always got yelled at. See, so really slide them closer. Thank you. All right, we got some, we got a Roy, Roy, Roy jib. You've read orange, yellow, green, blue. I mean, I know that yellow is lemon. I know orange is orange. But green, blue, and red, it's like who knows? It could be, it's anyone's guess. I have the best idea ever. Let's trace Cosmo and use his shape. I think it would be very fun. Also, I don't know how I'm going to do that. I want to taste each of these components separately. It's really only sweet. There's no sour flavor at all and some vague fruit flavoring. I'm going to taste now the crystal coating. I can say definitively, citric acid and, and granular sugar. That chewy texture, I know it's going to be difficult, but there's really just one task. Everything else is just kind of assembly and is, is not so challenging. Time for my favorite part, reading the ingredients. Sugar, shocked. Invert sugar, corn syrup, modified corn starch, tartaric acid, citric acid, natural and artificial flavor, yellow six, red 40, yellow five, blue one. That's it. Yeah, we gotta do some research. To the computer. This has, they were originally created 
under the name of Mars Men. In 1985, they were renamed to Sour Patch Kids, likely to capitalize on the popularity of Cabbage Patch Kids. Makes sense. Oh my god. Okay, this, wait, this is a BA article from two years ago. How to make, oh, okay. How to make citrus candy taste like Sour Patch Kids candy. So this is basically about a pastry chef who was candying citrus peel and then tossing it in a sugar citric acid mix. And candy peel does have that kind of chewy texture. It's a really interesting idea. A method that I'm thinking about in my head to take a combination of citrus peel and green apple and the, maybe the dehydrator and like create something like a Pat de Fruit, which is a natural like sh um, fruit gummy. Let's see if I can get something close to that texture. I don't know if it's gonna work, but it might come close enough and be so radical that we are just impressed. And well, it just depends on what Cosmo says, but it could work. I don't know what the process is gonna be yet. In my mind, I'm thinking of two main components. One is candied citrus peel, and one is a green apple jelly, which is what I used to start Gushers. And I'm gonna start by making the green apple jelly. I need three and a half pounds of apples. I, and now I need seven cups of water. But I'm leaving the peel, stem, and seeds all intact. The first step is to extract the pectin from the apples, so I just simmer them in water. All right, I can't make green apple jelly on account of there's no gas, which means they've tried to get me. Gabby. These ones just want to start cooking now. Hi. The gas is out. <laughs> <laughs> if you listen really carefully, you'll hear the banging of pots in the glass. Okay, I need thin sheet metal. I need a thin. lot of things, <laughs> Like real thin. Okay, let me back up. I need to make my own cookie cutter. Oh, See, you're not make so a bad. Sheet and then cut it. Claire, how yeah. are you going to make that mold? I'm gonna, no, 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 I'm gonna take a strip of metal and bend it into the mold. You know, that sounds great. That's yeah. going to maybe be a nightmare. These have been cooking for 40 minutes. The idea is that the pectin has been released from the fruit. So I'm straining out the solids because I just want the clear jelly. I just want the clear liquid with all the pectin in it. So what I should do is let this sit overnight and this will keep straining in the fridge. And tomorrow when we come back, add the sugar, cook that down and then Go move on to the citrus peel. But I have no idea if it's gonna work and it might be a complete failure. So I don't know. I'm gonna reserve judgment until tomorrow. I feel like it's day 1.5. Thank you. Thank you. I'm thinking that I can make like a, a patch of fruit from the pith of the citrus, which is very, very, very bitter. But through a series of blanching and cooking in a sugar solution, it becomes soft and also sweet and that some of the bitterness is taken out. The question is how to get something that is the texture of citrus pith into something smooth and punchable. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna work. But let's try it. In this pot is that apple mixture that I strained last night and now I'm adding sugar and this is cooking down and it will gel very firm. While the apple jelly is cooking, I'm going to break down my citrus and start to take the peel off. Oh my god, hi! Hi Cosmo! When's the last time you had a Sour Patch Kid? Not that long ago. For me, for me it's been a little while. Oh yeah, this is Cosmo. Hi. <laughs> Your mom told me, Cosmo, that you really like sour. So I'm gonna try to make them even more sour than Sour Patch Kids. One thing I think would be cool with a homemade version is if we really make the shape more <laughs> lifelike. So I thought maybe we could use your outline as the shape to cut the Sour Patch Kids into. And I don't have a plan yet. It's just an idea, so it might not work. You want to do it now? Yeah. All right. Bye. Oh, that's a good one. That's good. Do like a profile. <laughs> Possible. Awesome. This is my apple jelly. I'm gonna do, I wanna do a test on this. So I have some plates in the freezer because that's how you test for this set. So when I run my finger through it, it's supposed to wrinkle. See it wrinkle? So it's done. And now I'm gonna focus on my citrus. I think that I would do, I might do a lime flavor, a Meyer lemon flavor, 
And the lemon, I might do cherry, because we have some cherry juice, so I'm gonna try that. What I need to do now is blanch all of these separately three times in boiling water. Three times three, it's, it's kind of a process. This whole thing might not work, and I might have spent the entire day working on it for nothing. Oh, it clicks. So once it's boiling, I'm gonna bring it over to the sink, drain, rinse, rinse, rinse. All right. The next step is to juice the citrus fruits that I've left over and use those as the flavoring. Cosmo. Can you give me a hand? Why don't you hop up right here? You know, there's a little step stool for you. So you can just start throwing the limes in the top right there. And then this, ooh! <laughs> now, now we know. Hop, ready? Three. Yeah, you didn't know you were gonna have to do all this. This thing is like a real high tech kind of gadget. I'm gonna guess two thirds of a cup. How does this work? I don't know. I feel like I'm doing it wrong. Awesome. That was fun. Thank you for your help. Let's see where we are. I have all of my blanched peel. I have my juices and zests. I'm feeling very organized at least. I'm going to get this in a food processor and chop it up into little bits. It smells so good. I'm adding the lime zest. And I'm gonna add all the juice that we have. And now the equal weight of sugar. So 160 grams sugar. Okay, now I'm gonna get this over onto the stove. As I cook it, it, the sugar will dissolve. They become sweet and translucent and softer. I, I have no idea what's gonna happen. I don't know if it's gonna work. Best case scenario is I get a very set, very firm, very delicious paste that I can spread into a layer and it sets and I've like made Sour Patch Kids. This is a wild stab in the dark. Hot, hot, it's my nephew. Ooh, mm, oh my God. Good. Mm, it's delicious. Good, right? Oh, yeah. Like it's bitter, but it's a nice yeah, bitter sweet tart it, yeah. balance. It's very limey. Yeah, that's it's good, right? I like that. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, I'm gonna add to this some of the green apple jelly. What a pretty color, right? Who knew it was gonna turn into this color? I did not. It hasn't fully set, but you can see even now it's really, really thick. So I feel good about adding this as just a boost. This is already getting very, very thick. That's one drop of leaf green gel. A mint green, yeah. It's not that far off. The texture is like, it's rubbery in a good way, and I think it's, because of that, it's gonna set up pretty firm, but we have to just wait and see. Oh, it's just like a lonely chicken hanging out. I'm excited to check out the green, the green slime. It's just like there's discrete pieces of peel, so it's a little granular seeming. I'm gonna toss this in some citric acid. It's gonna be so sour. It's too sour. Ooh, it hurts my teeth. Oh. I'm gonna try cutting this into pieces and then dehydrating the pieces. I got a new dehydrator that he told me I could use, but I, he has something in there, so I, I have to make sure. Is he here? What's he even got in there? Oh, he's making fish jerky. I don't want this to be in with the fish. It smells. We have to get the old one. I'm gonna get these in here on, I guess, medium high, which is where it is now. This is like old reliable, this dehydrator. It served us well in Gourmet Makes. It does its job. It's just bulky and clunky. While this is dehydrating, I wanna try, I wanna try actually the cherry batch that I'm gonna make with the lemon, but I'm gonna use a different assembly method where I basically blend it first before I cook it in a sugar solution to try to get it very, very smooth. <laughs> All right, it's pretty, it's pretty smooth. I mean, it's obviously much smoother than before. So before I did 50 grams of jelly to about 160 grams of the, I don't think it matters, whatever. I'm just gonna do. <laughs> All right, this is on its way. This has to really reduce down. I don't know if food coloring is gonna do anything. This is 
is not gonna be the same. This is cherry flavor that we've used. It's not the most natural. All right, one more. I'm more concerned by the texture, which is still pretty bitsy. It's good. Definitely get cherry. Lots of good lemon flavor and not really terribly sweet at all. This is going, going to go into the fridge. Thank you. And so everything is sticky. Had to rinse myself off. And what I have left is the Meyer lemon peel. The issues so far are, <laughs> are taste and texture, which is all of them. But now I have to address the toughness of the texture. So I think I'm gonna pressure cook it in some water to try to soften it to the point where I can really puree it. This is gonna go on high. Hold on. <gasps> Jesus! <laughs> I'm gonna feel these. Ow, hot. I think that actually worked really well. Now I wanna blend it to get it really smooth. This is very hot, so I'm gonna try not to burn myself. Looks pretty good. I mean, it's a puree. It has a little texture to it, but I think it looks better than before. Oh no, something got in it. What is that? Ew. What's happening? I also have another idea. I know I was talking about how I don't want to do that cooked sugar thing, but this texture, this is something you get from cooking sugar to a certain candy stage. What I might do is add to that like a cooked, basically cooked corn syrup and combine them and let it set. This is nice and thick. Hey, okay, shit, I like made caramel. Okay, I'm taking this out. I don't know if this is gonna work. Oh God, oh God. <laughs> I made floss. Okay, okay, so the sugar got too hot, the corn syrup got too hot, and then there just isn't a lot of volume in this bowl, and so it, the paddle was picking up the sugar before it could hit the fruit and start to incorporate. But I think more than anything, it's a temperature issue. Oh God, I should, I should just not do that. I wanna try this again, basically, and incorporate a couple of changes to method overall. As a parting thought, let's check on our lime mixture in here. Ooh, it's gotten a little bit of bounce. Do you wanna taste this? Yes, I do. This is very large. Yeah, you can just, you don't have to eat the whole thing. I won't. Don't. I would. I don't think Flavor's good. Yeah, right? It's like sweet, bitter, sour. The texture's kind of weird. The texture's weird. It's like, there's a lot of like little pieces in there. Yeah, 90% of the way there. I don't know about that math. Yeah, but, I think but yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I think if this works, it's like true innovation, and that's exciting. But that's also a big if. I'm proud of my method overall if not the result. It's day three, two and a half, technically. Ew, it's really wet. It's not really super elastic, it just is, it's more brittle. I do have to work on the texture significantly today. The flavor I like. So I have to obviously come up with a different method this time. Last time I finally grated the zest, juiced them, so I'm skipping all of that to save time, and I'm just going to do the citrus halves whole. Here's all my blanched citrus. I'm going to pressure cook them one at a time. So first I'm gonna start with the limes. I think I'm gonna go 15 minutes in the pressure cooker on high. Oh, damn it. Stupid gasket. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. You know, somebody needs to stop leaving this on high. Okay. It's very fluffy just because that worked a lot of air into it. You can see how smooth it is. But there are still some particles in there. So I'm gonna force it through a fine mesh strainer into a saucepan. This is a, called a chinois. This is a really useful tool for straining thick mixtures like this. Should I taste it real quick? It tastes really bad, it's gross. But there's no sugar in it. It's like eating a whole lime that you blended. So I want to add fresh lime juice because I want it to have a fresher lime flavor. And then I'm going to add sugar. Cook this down like I did on day two. I could be spending hours on this and have it not work. It's not ideal. While the lime mixture is cooking down, I'm going to pressure cook my remaining citrus. Here's everything. I'm gonna just set this aside. Here is my cooked down lime mixture. It's very like, um, congealed 
split pea soup. Mmm, mmm, that's good. The sweetness helps balance it out a lot. I'm going to do the cooked sugar and mix it together so the sweetness will increase. On day two, I cooked only corn syrup. I'm going to do a mixture of corn syrup, granulated sugar, and water this time because that didn't go so well. I'm gonna cook it to 260 Fahrenheit, so I'm looking, we're close. It's, okay, that's ready. All right, so I'm weighing out 200 grams. Actually, I'm gonna add some of this. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. It doesn't look fully incorporated, maybe. I'm gonna try adding a tablespoon of cornstarch, see if that does anything. Sometimes cornstarch is just the answer. I mean, cornstarch will help absorb some of the moisture. Honestly, I do feel like that looks better. I think the cornstarch sort of found it and like a, not emulsified it, but just brought it together. I'm surprised that the mixture doesn't seem to be firming up. I expected it to start to harden much faster. Okay, well, it looks pretty weird. It's not as smooth as I was hoping. I'll check back on it in 10 minutes or so just to see what the texture is. Okay, so it didn't, I wouldn't say that it's set. I would say that it's stayed very goo-like. Somehow adding hard sugar to a firm mixture, it became wetter. It seems like I've defied the laws of physics here. I really don't get it. I didn't really think it was gonna work. So in some ways, it's what I expected, but I was hoping that it was gonna work, so I am also disappointed. So now, I don't know, gelatin, go the gelatin route and see what happens. I think I might have to do some research like how to make stuff. Yeah, I think I am gonna Google how to make sour patch kids. So one thing I found on this website, a little bit down the road when I have an actual thing to form into sour patch kids, once you have the cut pieces of, in this case, pate just to soak them in enough Everclear to cover before you roll them in a coating of sugar. As the Everclear desiccates the candy, forming a leathery skin on its surface that will keep the rolling sugar from turning sticky and syrupy for several hours. I guess I wasn't aware that Everclear is the brand of alcohol. I just know it's a very high proof. They sell basically just grain alcohol, which is 190 proof. Is that right? Everclear enjoys tremendous brand recognition and a loyal near cult status following. That's the description. What are they gonna do, like give like tasting notes? Like the grain alcohol? <laughs> That was the only tip I really picked up from that. Um, let me do a proper test with corn syrup, the fruit, the fruit juice to get everything to spin, and, and the apple jelly, because I want everything really well incorporated before I start to cook it down. So this one I'm going to try lemon. Instead of water, I'll use some of that cherry juice. And the new plan is put everything in the blender and then cook it. I like this plan better. I'm gonna take this over to the stove and once it reduces down. I had a thermometer in this mixture, it cooked down a lot and then I turned it up and then I walked away and then it kind of burned and it also never got up to the right temperature. So I think it is a failure. Let's just see. So I wanna pour this out of the pot so that I don't scrape any of the um, offensive burned pieces with it. It does not look good. This thing will be soaking for a while. Actually, it's kind of pretty. I want to quickly try to whisk in a little bit of food coloring. I'm going to put in just like a drop of cherry flavor. Do a quarter teaspoon of citric acid. It smells very cherry -y. Ooh. Ooh, Remember next smell. time. <laughs> but yeah. Maybe not too hot. Ooh. <gasps> what, does it taste burned? Why does it tingle? Huh? Is it like a chemical burn? It's my esophagus. <laughs> esophagus gonna be okay? It kind of made me feel like I was gonna pass out for a sec. Um, <laughs> but other than um, that, I think you're probably on the right track. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Claire. <laughs> I think there. I put too. I put too much cherry flavor in it. Okay, maybe that's it. I also burned it a little. But the bitterness is also that it's whole lemon in there. Oh, Does that okay. explain it? Does that make okay. you feel better? That makes me feel better. But maybe it's gonna be great, you know? Maybe. Like dust it with sugar, stamp it out. Call it a day. Call it a day. Ow, I just, ow. 
texture is not right. Rhoda, help me. I th I'm afraid that we're reaching the point where I have to scrap three days of work and start over. How are you going to shape it? I'm so far from okay, sorry. having decided on how I'm <laughs> going to shape it. I so like I need some more sugar. I don't know, it's not very sweet. It's so bitter and sour. Yeah, it's very sour and bitter. It tastes like <laughs> cherry cough medicine, kind yeah. of. I, I think you're doing great, though. You're definitely on the right track. Thanks, Rhoda. <laughs> Don't show this part. I just don't think it's gonna work. I think that this whole thing is a huge waste of time. It's so hard. Don't show this part. Emil, do you wanna trade? Can we trade? Do you wanna smell like this? It's not that bad. Ugh. So where are you at right now? What's going on? You I, seem discouraged, so I mean. I have no, I have nothing to show you. It's just one failed batch after another. What are you doing wrong? I couldn't even tell you. Oh! <laughs> I'm so sick of eating steak. It's so great to have a little fruit. There you go. You're going to feel great. Mm. Okay, I will trade. Really? Let me go in there and fry a steak. Can we? Can, can I try it? Let's mm -hmm. see what happens. Okay. Yeah. What? Wait. You're on. Oh, you're on deep fry. I don't really want to do that. What's the next one? <laughs> Perfect. Now you're married. Left. Left. We're trading places. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's helpful to talk to yourself while it's happening. Just okay. So you have uh, I'm a I'm a lefty too, so they're they're gonna know. Oil. All right, ready? Yep. Oh god. Oh god. Thumbs up. Okay, ready? It's hot over there. Thank you. Thank you. How are you feeling emotionally? Um, I'm feeling like breaks are very important when you hit a roadblock, and it was good to go over there and be a meal for five minutes. But then I came back here, and I still don't want to do it. So <laughs> it didn't really help. The texture is so wrong with pureed citrus. It's like, maybe that's just not the way to go. I think I had to just scrap this plan, even though I did spend two days cooking citrus and try a version, I don't know, try, try a version of just juice, just lemon juice. I have limes here already cut. I might as well try lime. So maybe what I'll do is juice, apple jelly, sugar, corn syrup. Let's start at 240 and we can always increase Try to pour this out onto the parchment. Certainly the texture is smooth. I'm gonna slide it onto a tray and put it in the fridge. I feel good about that actually. All right, look at this mixture. It's definitely different than before. I mean, this is the opposite of the problem I was having. Like this has a dramatic sort of pull texture. We'll try pectin. I had kind of forgotten what that texture of like stretchy sugar is like and it's not what we're going for. Um, I made a cinnamon roll. <laughs> Let's see the goo. No, the goo is still goo. You said you were optimistic about this. Okay, well after oh, nearly a week in the fridge, it has not firmed up at all. It's still mush. I don't want this. <laughs> I don't, don't send it back. I don't want to look at it. This new method using mostly sugar and corn syrup, but then also gelatin and pectin in combination. It sounds like a generally sound method to me, but it does involve drying them. And some of the resources I read said you, you can do that in a dehydrator, so we'll try that. And we're also gonna try the grain alcohol idea to really dehydrate the outer coating. What's not ideal about this method is that it does rely on flavoring agents, like flavoring oils, and not a more natural fruit-derived flavor, but it does let me introduce juice, so that's that's a bonus. Oh, Concord, okay, that could be fun, yeah. You can do a grape flavor, a sour cherry flavor, and then I can do the other, the citrus flavors. Red, yellow, orange. You have to get a mixture of sugar and corn syrup into a saucepan. This mixture is just sugar and corn syrup and a little water to encourage it to dissolve, and that's it. 
then my pectin and gelatin measured out and I want to start hydrating the gelatin in the fruit juice. I think I'm going to start flavor-wise with grape. So this, this thing will go completely solid. It's already on its way. All right, we're at 270. Just gonna pull this off. We can keep talking. This just has to sit here. What is this? Just some cooked sugar. Oh, this doesn't smell very good. You know what's gonna happen today? You're gonna try them. Uh-huh. It's my birthday today. It is? Yeah. Happy birthday. So that's the gift you can give me, is oh to my try God. sour batch kit. All right, back up. Bye, Delaney. Have fun, happy birthday. Thanks. So I'm adding my citric acid, my gelatin mixture, Jeez. And now my food coloring. I'm gonna add a little bit of eggplant and a little bit of the other purple. So the idea here is that the heat from the sugar syrup is melting the gelatin. Okay, now I'm gonna pour it out onto my parchment. You can see it's definitely starting to set up already. Oh God, okay. I'm very glad I greased this parchment. I'm just trying to cut strips approximately whatever this is by whatever this is. I can't, I can't remember what the sizes were. These I'm going to put in the dehydrator. I just wanna see what's happening in here. Look at what happened. <laughs> so that happened. What happened was they melted because of the gelatin. I think we have to put do it cold, but put them in front of the fan in the fridge, in the walk-in. It's all up here, maybe if I put it, yeah, yeah, this is a good spot. So the other thing that I wanna try is, I wanna see what happens when I put some of this mixture in that grain alcohol that we got. So this is Everclear 190 proof grain alcohol. Just going to pour a little bit of this. <laughs> Sorry. And I'm not exactly sure what the chemistry is. It's unclear if it dries it out just on the surface to create kind of like a skin or if it really dries the whole thing out, but let's let's try it. I don't know, the dream of a Sour Patch Cosmo is going getting further and further away. There are certainly no kind of prefab silicone molds that fit the bill. We're, I'm better off just punching them out. Look, snow, um, gingerbread man, man, it's huge. If you look at overall area, yeah, this one's bigger, but it's not crazy. This one is the best one so far. This one is my, maybe perfect. It already looks like a little person. I just have to thin out those arms. <laughs> it really does look like a ghost. The only thing left to do is make more of our sugar mixture. So I think I'm starting with lemon orange. Uh, maybe I'll do cherry next. It's like hockey puck of pectin. And so basically I wanna bring this up again after I add the gelatin to the saucepan. And the gelatin, I have a feeling, is not fully dissolving. All right. My citric acid, maybe one drop of cherry flavor. One, oh, that was two. Super red food coloring. That looks pretty good. Let's look at the cherry. It's much firmer now, so I just popped it out. I wanna try punching out some of the shapes. Oh my God, it's so bouncy, I can't even press this down into it. Oh, there we go. Let's do that a thousand more times. It, I made it, it's the Sour Patch Penguin. Oh, it's not that bad. Ooh, what if I, hold on, I have such a good idea. Well, I just figured something out, which is the reason Sour Patch Kids have no arms is because all of these limbs want to stick to themselves and each other really bad. So I think if I continue to make these, I have to start soaking them immediately in the grain alcohol so that the outside dehydrates and then they become less sticky. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make a couple extra flavors to have around. This is for me to taste. This will now go into the fridge. Well, it's still doing that. Lemon is good. This one's good. Yeah. So, while this is cooling down, let's go into the walk-in and just check on the ones that are drying. Okay, I'm gonna try. They are very chewy. They still, you know, they're still pretty springy, but overall, like I think, I think the step of drying it is a good one. And maybe I should leave all of these batches in the walk-in with the fan on them overnight. Thank you. All right. It's now been several hours in the grain alcohol. They're really not sticky at all on the outside. So this is a great technique, I think, for making sure they don't stick together. 
Once these three new flavors are set, I'll pop them out of the pans and put them on a sheet tray and get them in the walk-in to really dry out. And then tomorrow the plan is to cut them, soak them in alcohol, I think, and then coat them in the citric acid mixture and then we're done. Right, and then we're done. All right, so it's hard to tell if they've really dried out or if they're just really cold. They feel very firm. More, I think the orange more than the others. I wanna taste the orange. I don't know, the orange one looks really good, I think. Maybe, maybe the best one yet. And it is doing a little bit more of that pull. Flavor is good. Seems like the most successful batch yet. The flavor is better. And then this is the first one I made, the sour cherry. You get a nice pull, but not like a crazy long stretch. I don't think that I would gain anything from making anything over again. I'm really happy with these. So I want to focus on cutting out shapes. You want me to say that this is Cosmo? This is close, as close as I can get. We did this like weeks ago when I thought I was going to be better at this. So we're going to just take a few liberties and say that this is the shape. I don't even like this shape though. I'd almost rather do this one and make them really big. It's just so much easier to punch out something this size. No, I forgot to grease it. It's not bad. I think it's kind of cute. This one looks more like a baby. All the Sour Patch kids are just gonna be the larger kind, more like this one. All right, now I'm going to, into production mode, cutting all the shapes, getting them in here. To, as I cut out each one, I wanna start soaking them in the grain alcohol because it will prevent them from sticking to each other. So while these soak, I can at least put together that sour coating. So that's one part citric acid, let's try two parts sugar. Nailed it, I think it's good. We're gonna go with this. I'm just wondering if I should try to flavor the coating for each one. I feel like I haven't done my best work so far and maybe this is my only opportunity to, to impress. All right, so I'm gonna make three different flavors of the coating, lemon, orange, and cherry. I'm just gonna get everything in the dehydrator in small bits, and then once it's dry, I'll pulverize it in a spice grinder. Hopefully nothing bad happens. Uh, dry enough, I think. And I'm just going to add all of the lemon to one. <laughs> Here's orange. Let me give it a little taste. Good. Really sour. <laughs> I'm ready to start the coating. Ooh, these little guys. It is an enormous sour fish kit. Do they need double coats? Oh, shit. hold on, that was orange anyway. Okay, finally done with all the coating. I have my three flavors. I think they're done. And I think they're done because I was told they have to be done because we don't have time to let them dry for a week. So. Cosmo will love these. They're extremely sour. Not even that sweet. There's a lot of citric acid there in the end. I am proud of the relatively clean fruit flavor of each of the colors. Maybe those are, that's like at your own risk. Uh, that one's quite sour. The only thing that's left is to have people taste them. Hopefully they'll be kind and not too harsh. They're like big boys. Yeah, they're huge. <laughs> 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 this might be like three sour bags. <laughs> I think it's more than that. You want to weigh them and see? 9.8 9 .8 grams. grams. That's a lot. All right, let's see what one of the big guys. Five, 5.8. It's like you're getting a deal. Yeah, exactly. I love a deal. Now I kind of want to eat a, a cherry. That is sour. Yeah, it's really sour. Too much on the coating? Too much uh -huh. citric acid? <laughs> <laughs> this is like a little sharper and cleaner than... Ah, That's, okay. It's like a dull sour. This feels like a. We'll take it. A big sharp sour. The flavor of this is fantastic. Thank you. You know, I did the best I could. You really did, Claire. I just wish I'd done better. Does. <laughs> That's how I feel every. Literally every day, Claire. So. Wow! Look at these guys! <laughs> <laughs> these look amazing! Wow! Somebody watch Cosmo! I, that was me. That was me. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> they look done. They look. Oh, they're done. <laughs> but they're not good. <laughs> they're very sour. Very like, sour. Cosmo will love him. Okay. Also, tell send one home yeah. to Cosmo with our sincere apologies. Tell him that I struggled so hard when it came time to cut them. Mm-hmm. You delivered on our. On the more sour. Oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like the cherry. Yeah? Yeah. It's actually not a bad texture. I I actually prefer the texture of this to that. You do? Really? They have like a gingerbread manishness. Yeah, totally. Oh, that was the cutter I used (laughs) to make them. The little gingerbread man cutter. Nice shape, nice color. Great job. Thanks, Rhoda. (laughs) Thank God for Rhoda. Okay, final thoughts. Trying to keep it positive. Next time we have to do a gummy candy. I do feel like I learned a lot. It's, this was just sort of like very repetitive and I wasted kind of three days of time on that weird citrus peel idea. So this one was frustrating, but now I know more for next time. And I think Cosmo is really gonna like these because they're so sour and maybe I should have tempered that citric acid coating. But I know that I at least have one true fan and that is Cosmo and that's the important thing. So to have pleased the people who already love Sour Patch Kids is great. I never want to see them again. Here's how you make gourmet Sour Patch Kids. Combine one cup sugar, three tablespoons of water, and three quarter cup corn syrup in a small saucepan and bring to a boil, stirring to dissolve the sugar. Stop stirring and clip a candy thermometer to the side and cook to 290 degrees Fahrenheit. Meanwhile, bloom 50 grams of powdered unflavored gelatin in a half a cup of sour cherry, lemon, or orange juice. Then stir in 15 grams of pectin. Stir this mixture into the sugar syrup along with a pinch of salt. Then stir in one and a quarter teaspoons of citric acid and the corresponding fruit flavor oil or extract until smooth. Pour the mixture into a greased parchment lined pan and chill until set. Punch out shapes using a cutter and soak the cutouts in grain alcohol to dehydrate the surface. Place on a rack and chill uncovered in the refrigerator until very firm and chewy. Dehydrate lemon zest, orange zest, and dried sweet cherries in a dehydrator on high, then grind into a powder. Combine with citric acid and granulated sugar to taste. Coat the Sour Patch Kids in the correspondingly flavored sour sugar. All right, you ready to try the uh, Sour Cosmo Kids? (laughs) Yeah. really good. Would you say too sour? Nothing is too sour. <laughs> <laughs>